Hello and welcome back to FTL Advanced Edition Faster Than Light, just in a different order. We're going to start a new game today, and on the last run, spoilers, we played as the Mantis Cruiser A-Type, the Gila Monster. We had a pretty good run, but unfortunately we didn't have enough firepower to actually defeat the Rebel flagship, so we did not succeed with a victory. We will have to do this run again with this ship, but we did get all three of the achievements, meaning we unlocked the B-Type layout for the Gila Monster, the Basilisk. This ship is very amazing and fun to play with. One of my favorite ships of all time is the B-type layout of the Gila Monster, the Basilisk here. But we are not going to be we are not going to be playing the Mantis ship today. We are going to switch over to the Lanius Cruiser, which I believe we unlocked because we got four victories with the Rebel flagship. We do, we have four uh, victories with four different ships. So we're going to be playing as the Kruos. Now this ship has extensive advanced edition content. It has emergency respirators, which is a AE augment, allows our crew to take half damage from low oxygen, pretty nice. It has a chain laser, which has two power, two shots, 16 second charge time, but after it keeps firing multiple times, the charge time gets quicker and quicker. This is a pretty terrible weapon to have to start with. We will have to upgrade this later. We have the ion stunner, which is a pretty decent ion weapon to start with. It's only one power, it takes 10 seconds to charge, it only does one ion damage, but it also stuns enemy crew inside, it stuns any crew inside of the shield room when it hits the shields, or inside of whatever room that you hit when you actually pierce the shields. It's a very nice one power weapon that you can just put on any ship and it will do, it will be effective pretty much. So this is a pretty nice weapon. Chain laser, not so much. We'll, we, we will want to get rid of that at some point. We start with two Lanius crew members, which I don't think I've even seen yet in this playthrough. These anaerobic beings, seem friendly enough, drains oxygen from rooms and slow movement, but no damage from lack of oxygen. So basically, if you see here on the ship layout, the two Lanius have no oxygen in their rooms because they drain oxygen from the rooms that they are in, meaning that uh, they don't actually need oxygen to survive. It's very nice if we are ever invaded because these guys will suck the air out of rooms and the enemy will stay in the room with the Lanius shooting them even though they are suffocating to death. So these guys make good borders, they make good anti-borders. But the biggest sort of problem I have with this ship, actually, honestly, the chain laser is a pretty big problem. But we also have a clone bay. And the clone bay is just an alternative room to the med bay. It sucks. Or at least I, I don't particularly like the clone bay for several reasons. First of all, the med bay, you can actually get your crew members to full health in between encounters. You can't do that with the with the uh, the clone bay. You can do that with the med bay, meaning that if you run into a situation where you are, you are boarded by an enemy, you know, several beacons in a row, your crew is going to get wounded, they can't heal, and they're going to die and get shoved into the clone bay to get cloned and come back to life. Second thing I don't like about the clone bay is that if it gets damaged, your crew members can die permanently. That sucks. There's an augment that prevents that, but that's just, that's a sucky thing to have happen. You could think that you're doing fine, your crew members die, but hey, you got the clone bay, right? All of a sudden a missile hits it and then your crew members just are dead and there's nothing you can do about it. That sucks. Third reason I don't like the clone bay is that um, if you are boarded, you know, if you have a med bay, you can always force the enemy to fight you in the med bay, leave one or two units in the med bay, and then go off and do your own thing. You don't have to micromanage the fight. We have to micromanage our fights on board the ship extensively, because if our crew members die and the clone bay gets knocked out, they're gone for good. So we're going to have to be extra, extra careful about being boarded. Otherwise, you know, we have uh, oh, three achievements that we need to actually look out for and try to complete on this run. Advanced Mastery have hacking, mind control, and the battery active at once. Basically because those are advanced edition content rooms, and this is an AE content ship. So have three of the uh, of those systems. Well, the battery is a subsystem, which is nice, but... Scrap Hoarder have at least 600 scrap in your ship storage. That's actually kind of difficult to do, but if we get very overpowered early, it is possible. You know, Sector 6 and 7, maybe even Sector 8, you just don't spend your scrap, you collect as much as you can. Loss of cabin pressure, this is a tough one to get. 
Get to Sector 8 without your ship's net oxygen levels exceeding 20%. Starts after your first jump. Basically, when we start the game, we're going to open all the doors on the ship and then never close them again. Except for the pilot. Pilot's going to have oxygen. Every other room on the ship is going to be deoxygenated, and we're just going to try our best to make sure it stays under 20%, get this achievement done, and if we can get one other achievement, then we will get the B-type layout for the crew of us here. Worth noting is that this ship does not have a C-type layout either. So, this is going to be a very difficult run. This is a very difficult ship. We actually already start with hacking, I didn't realize, which is very nice because we can hack enemy weapons or shields, allowing the charge laser time to get powered up, and also because uh, it makes advanced mastery just a little bit easier to get. All we need is mind control and battery. Very doable. Very, very doable. So before we do anything else, uh, save stations, open all doors, close up the piloting room. Oxygen level is now at 6%. We can't let this number get above 20, or maybe even equal to 20. We can close off a few other rooms as we go if we get some more crew members, but we need to keep oxygen levels as low as possible, pretty much. We also have the chain laser and ion stunner we can keep charged up. The clone bay, you know, right now it only has one HP and it heals our crew for eight HP every jump. So if people are wounded, like Fairy here, if, he, if I move him out and move him back in, he has 95 HP. He will heal for eight every time I jump somewhere else, which is nice to get people healed up over time, but it's not very good for burst healing like you can get with the med bay. We will attempt to follow a heavily damaged Federation ship in a nebula and we find a rebel ship instead. This is fine. We will hack their weapons because we have nine hacking parts. That's, that's pretty decent. And why are we hacking weapons? We're just hacking weapons to keep their missile launcher from firing because we can take down their shields with the ion stunner and then use the chain laser to take down their weapons hopefully well both shots had to hit but luckily they actually changed their power they changed their power in such a way that they are keeping their laser online instead of their missile launcher definitely a bad move on their part but i'm not going to complain am i Ion Stunner is missing, but the Chain Laser already up to level 2, meaning that it's firing a lot quicker, more quickly than it was before. And now it's only going to take 7 seconds to charge up. But to, the problem with the uh, the Chain Laser right now is that 2 shots is not all that much. You know, 2 shots can't penetrate 1 bar of shields that effectively. You know, if a ship has 2 bars of shields, it can't penetrate at all. We have to wait for the Ion, ion Stunner to shoot anyways. The chain laser works for very long encounters, you know, like the uh, Rebel flagship maybe. But for right now, it's just, it's an annoying weapon to have to deal with because it just fires so slowly off the bat. It doesn't synergize that well with the Ion Stunner, except for the fact that the Ion Stunner removes enemy shields, of course. But if we can get some better weaponry in the future, maybe we can use the chain laser with the Ion Stunner with something else, like a flak gun would be very nice. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We will definitely intervene to defend the outpost, and this is a kind of a nasty ship. They have a three-shot laser and a one-shot laser. We will definitely be hacking their, probably their weapon systems right here. I could hack their shields, but a five-second hack is not all that useful in hacking shields. It doesn't really take their, their shields down for very long. Being able to hack weapons, I can keep their weapons, you know, not charged. I can allow me the opportunity to get two shots in take down one of their lasers, and now they can't damage me at all. Not even going to shoot the Ion Stunner, going to wait a second for the Chain Laser to be almost charged and ready to go. Good, two shots started a fire, their weapons are completely offline. And now he is dying, he's trying to get into the med bay, he can't reach it, oh, oh, it sucks for him. Now Mort trying to get into the med bay as well. I can probably kill the crew, actually. Yeah, the med bay is now destroyed. We do have a sensor's room, so I can put someone in the sensor's room and actually take a look, see what's, see what's happening there. They do have two crew members. I don't think I can kill them, though. Yeah, I probably can't kill them. It's unfortunate, but it happens. I can keep them wounded, but the fire is not spreading into the med bay, and it's a second level med bay, and their ship's already taken a lot of damage, so they are going to, to uh, 
Well, they're going to survive, but they're going to die here in a second. There we go. If I stopped shooting them earlier, maybe I could have killed the crew, but that's fine. We picked up a lot of scrap, actually, enough so that I am going to get the second level clone bay. And probably even more so than the med bay, the second level upgrade, which I very much like, I think this is necessary. It prevents the clone bay from being completely destroyed if we get hit there once, which means that we have a little bit of leeway in not getting our crew killed. We also, of course, have like that right there, for instance. We also have a uh, faster recovery time from being killed. I think it's like, was it like 11 seconds to seven seconds now? And we also get 16 HP every jump instead of eight. So it's not bad having that second level clone bay upgrade. We also don't need to power it right now. We only need to power it if someone is dead. Otherwise, it's a purely passive heal that we get out of it. So we don't need to worry about it right now. Refugee ship drifting in space. We are going to hail them. It is just a pirate. That is fine. <sighs> Interesting situation we have here. Do I hack them? Uh, let's, let's not hack them right now. I will get hit once if we get hit for one because these weapons are gonna shoot at about the same time anyways. We're not gonna be able to really dodge the weapons, but if we get hit for one point of damage, that's fine. We actually dodged their shot, which is very nice, and now their weapons are offline. The, the reason why I was considering hacking was because these weapons were firing at about the same time, and if I... I think we can actually kill the crew right here. Uh, if I... <laughs> if I hack their weapons, they wouldn't be able to... Um... I'm, I'm doing this very poorly, by the way. Uh, if I hacked our weapons, they wouldn't be able to actually do damage to us until we could get our first barrage of shots in. Our shots are definitely missing. They, are, they have a pretty good pilot. Their oxygen system is destroyed, so they will eventually suffocate, but they do have this one slug man here who is going to get their weapons repaired. It's going to take a while before he actually takes damage thanks to deoxygenation so we are going to have a bit of a problem actually getting our shots in there i think i will try to hit the, his shield system once yeah get him to repair that and also now i can stun him in the shield room preventing him from getting his heals in and as i prevent him from healing we can kind of gain some experience with our crew in the shield room not shield room, probably in the engines room try to dodge some shots get better uh, training on our crew in the weapons room. Hopefully they die from deoxygenation, but if they don't, they don't. Basically, if they get the shield system repaired, I'm just gonna have to kill them. Uh, maybe. Let's take a second. Their oxygen's low, but it's not low enough. He's gonna get his second weapon online, and I don't really want to take damage if I can avoid it. So, we're just gonna kill him. I could have let him repair the weapons and then you know, try to dodge the lasers when they were coming in, but let's just, let's just, you know, play the safe route right now. We would only pick up a couple of extra scrap, most likely. We do pick up a rather decent amount of scrap from that beacon. The last couple of beacons, we actually got double rewards out of it. We got a reward from destroying the ship, and we got a reward from the encounter. You know, rescuing rebels, rescuing, not rescuing, rescuing rebels, rescuing refugees fleeing from rebels, rescuing a... Space Station, we're getting those double rewards, which is very, 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 very nice. Better hacking would be very useful, especially later when enemies have more shields, but I think for now I will go for the... Probably the shield system, actually. I was thinking maybe upgrade the doors, but we do have two Lanius plus a deoxygenated ship. We should be able to survive this. Uh, better sensors would have allowed me to pick up an item from there, I do believe. Should have gotten the sensor upgrade. I will give them five missiles. They will give me just either hull points repaired or scrap or a reactor. I forgot about that option from that encounter. One extra power in the reactor is fine. That's like 20 scrap right there, so I don't mind spending some missiles. We're not using the missiles right now. The enemy, the anti-combat drone drone won't actually be able to damage us at all because it only blocks enemy drones. We don't have any drones coming in. They have a lot of crew. We're not gonna be able to kill their crew at all. Their, 
They do have a system repair drone as well, so we can't even like kill the oxygen or anything like that. We might be able to hack the oxygen and kill them. In fact, maybe that's a reason why we might want to consider uh, upgrading our hacking system, because if we can hack the oxygen or the med bay, we can kill the crew rather easily. So maybe I will try to pick up the second level hack upgrade as soon as possible. We did get one free reactor power, so we can, you know, spend the 35 scrap to get the the reactor power bonus and then not have to spend, or spend the 35 scrap to get the hacking bonus and then not have to spend any more, uh, any more scrap than that. We don't have to upgrade the reactor at all. Going to shoot shoot some shots in on the piloting and engine system to keep them from escaping, and they are dead. Pick up 14 scrap, no beacons in the vicinity, so let's get the second level of the hacking module. Will also allow us to hack enemy weapons for longer, which is nice to prevent us from taking as much damage over time. Another wreckage, and we do find a, a rebel ship that is going to board us with a drone. It's going to be annoying, but we have Lanius to deal with that, and they only have a single laser, so they can't actually damage us at all. As long as they don't destroy our clone room, we'll be fine. And he is trying to destroy our uh, hacking system, which we are obviously not going to allow. We don't need to hack. We could hack their drone system, but I think we're fine here. Marcus is going to take the brunt of this assault. If he dies, no problem. We are just going to bring him back to life later. Eh, uh, let's just kill the drone. This is going to take a while to, to do anyways. Might as well send in the chain laser. It gets faster the more you shoot it, so let's just... Let's, let's shoot it, basically. It's got to recharge, though. Right, that guy is dead. We will get hit by another drone here in a minute, so let's take out their drone system now. We hit it for one. That may or may not be enough to stop them from sending over another drone, but even if it's not, we can just keep shooting it. Chain laser has now reached level three, so it's going to shoot very quickly. Might as well auto-fire it. Eh, maybe I should have waited right there. Honestly, auto-firing the stun laser... I should have fired earlier. Honestly, firing the stun laser on auto-fire early in this combat is probably not a very good thing. All right, you cannot take down my uh, clone bay. Can't let you do that, sorry. All right, this drone is now depowered, so it's not gonna be shooting back at us. Lanius don't take damage from deoxygenation, so they have a, they have plenty of time to take out this drone. They're trying to escape. It is bad, because we're not doing a lot of damage to these guys. Ion Stunner goes in, we hit their piloting system now. The dodging is ridiculous. We, we can't stop them from getting away unless I hack them right now. So let's try to hack them. Prevent them from escaping. We will get the Ion Stunner out, damage their engines, and now the engines are out. The reason why I shot the engines was because they had two bars of engine power. And I could tell that because I hacked it. So we did manage to kill them before they escaped. That was very close, and that was probably a little bit too close, but we managed to make it work. I think it's also probably going to be beneficial maybe to get the second level sensors just so that we can see what's happening on board the enemy ships, but for now we're fine. I would like to get a second bar of shields though. Maybe not as soon as possible, but pretty dang quickly. We're not really killing these enemy ships very fast, so getting some additional defense against lasers would be nice. It wouldn't, it wouldn't help us against a ship like this, but this ship also has no shield, so we should be able to hit their weapon systems with the Ion Stunner. But they will probably yeah, fire both of their weapons as soon as they exit Cloak, so we will probably get hit here in the shield room, which sucks. So let's send our hack in on their weapons prevent them from firing their laser again. Our weapons will get charged up. We will fire everything we have on their weapons. Well, it would be nice if we could actually hit them. Good, we took down their missile launcher, so at least their laser can't actually damage us anymore. They're, they are going to wait to fire until they exit their cloak, which honestly doesn't matter because we have our shields back online. 
And now we wait. You can also see, because we hacked the weapons room, that there is a small amount of auto repair on the weapon. That little yellow bar above the weapon icon is slowly filling up. If the room was breached, then the uh, auto scout couldn't actually repair, but there's no breach in the room, so the auto scout can slowly repair their weapon systems over time. It does take a while to happen, but it does happen. Let's now hit the cloak so that they are not cloaked for very long anymore. And next we can just... Yep, shoot him with the chain laser and kill him. I should have ion stunned the piloting room so that the chain laser had a 100% chance of hitting, but oh well. It worked out. He's dead. Go to this distress beacon. Our crew slowly healing up. 16 hull points every jump. Hull points? Health points. We will shield their ship with ours. We pick up four fuel and 19 scrap. We got hit for one point of damage. The fire is going to go out in a second, so I don't really need to worry about that too much. Might as well not let my guys get any more wounded than they already are. They are not immune to fire, only the effects of deoxygenation. Although they are good at being firefighters because they put out the oxygen in a room while they're fighting the fire. Go to at least one more beacon before the exit. Maybe another one. We'll, we'll see what, uh, what it looks like here. They have a beam and one ion. The ion is actually kind of dangerous. So I will probably end up hacking their weapon system. Prevent them from fi from firing at us, because the beam can't do anything. The ion, if the ion takes out my shields, then the beam can just cut me up. And I don't want that to happen. So the chain laser coming in. Good, we got the one hit in which we needed, so now they can't actually damage us at all. I can focus on things like the piloting room, the shield room, the engine room, or even the drone room. Take out their drone so that it can't damage us at all, even if they got their uh, their weapons back online. But the weapons, their weapons slowly repairing themselves. It's going to take a while. So until that happens, I'm just going to decimate their ship. They have no dodge chance because both the piloting and the engines are destroyed. Shields are now offline. And this should finish them off because they have a 0% dodge chance. 8 scrap, not very good, but the 13 scrap kind of makes that worthwhile because now we picked up a total of 21 scrap from that beacon. Let's get a little bit more power and I can get a second level of shields online. Can't actually get the shields and the hacking module online at the same time, but if I need to I can always depower the oxygen, oxygen temporarily to get the hacking or something online. Uh, this is amazing. Hermes Missile Launcher. Hermes is a great weapon to have. It takes a while to charge, but it's actually quicker than the chain laser. This is actually really good. We can fire off Hermes, then the Ion Stunner, then the chain laser, and we can punch through three bars of shields completely. Because this does three points of damage, that will take care of two of the bars of shields. The Ion Stunner will take care of a third bar on its own because of the uh, the power because four bars of power are removed when you do three points of damage to the shields. It, it's kind of hard to explain, but hopefully we get to see that in the future. Abandoned Sector or Zoltan Controlled Sector. This is actually very terrible. Uh, kind of feel like going to the Zoltan Sector, but the Zoltan suck. Abandoned Sector is basically a Lania Sector. We're going to be fighting Lania ships, but we have Lania's crew, so maybe we will get better options from this. You know, maybe we can talk to the Lanius. We have Lanius on board. This does suck, though. This is very, very dangerous. Let's get... Let's wait and get the door system, because we are probably going to get invaded in this sector. Lanius do a lot of invading sometimes. A lot sometimes. Ah, uh, distress signal from the system is coming from a slug vessel under attack by the Lanius. Slugs beg for assistance as the Lanius tear into their hull plating. We will attack the Lanius and we will probably regret this. They are trying to hack us. They have an Ion Mark II and a laser, so we will be able to get out of the way of their weapons temporarily. Thanks to our shields, they're only hacking oxygen, which is honestly fine. I have emergency respirators, there's no way that they're killing my crew. Ion Stunner 
gonna wait on, wait for that on a second while the chain ion or the chain laser gets charged. Oh, this is actually not a uh, ion Mark II. This is a heavy ion, which does two points of ion damage, but it doesn't deal it, deal the damage fast enough to actually break through my my uh, my shields. So I don't even need to shoot at their weapon system. I was thinking I did. I actually don't. So let's fire on their shield system instead. Destroy it, then fire on. Actually, keep firing on the shield system because it's going to stun the crew in the room. So then I can focus fire on other things like the piloting system or the weapon system or even their oxygen system. But the oxygen system is. I mean, who cares about the oxygen system? Actually, I don't even want it powered up right now. Yeah, I do want it powered up. Yeah, that I think about it, having it powered up is probably pretty good. Because I do need some oxygen in the piloting room. Keep them stunned. They can't get any repairs in. Ion Stunner, it's a very nice one power weapon. Chain Laser, not so much. We also got some scrap rewards from the slugs. That was a pretty decent encounter. It was. It went a lot better than I was expecting. And I think that's primarily because this is only Sector 2. If this was Sector 5 or something, Sector 6, these Alania ships would be horrendous. I will upgrade the door and sensor system though. Now we can see on board the enemy ships, and we are slightly more resistant to invaders. I was expecting a mind control to happen eventually. Our Marcus Lanius has been mind controlled. This is, actually, I, I don't know if this is a level one or a level two mind control. Doesn't matter, we are going to be shooting at their, probably their weapon system immediately. Our Lanius can keep their, Lani, their old, my old Lanius, their current Lanius occupied for a time. Ionized their mind control slightly. We did take one point of damage. I did this in the wrong order. What I should have done is I should have ionized the um, the weapon system to take one of their weapons offline and then shot at the mind control. Well, at this point, I do need to shoot at their uh, their mind control system to take it offline. Their their lasers offline, which is the big problem there, so I don't have to deal with it anymore. There, now their weapons are completely offline, so we're not going to be taking any more damage. We only took one point of damage. That's not that bad. I could have done it without taking any damage, though, so it's kind of, you know, I could have done better. 14 scrap, not that bad. Would like to get the Hermes missile online at some point, but it's just going to take way too long at this point. Three extra bars of weapon power is a sector, or not a sector, a system, a system and a half worth of scrap. Invite him to join our crew, we get Charlie the Rockman. Now we will need to close off one of the rooms, like the shield room, so that he can man a room without getting killed by the deoxygenation. So we're just gonna put him in the shield room. Actually, he's good at weapons, but Ferris is also good at weapons. So we're gonna keep Ferris on the weapon system. Charlie can now be a shield engineer personnel, and we will continue to jump. Only 16 scrap. We're not going to be buying anything with 16 scrap. They have a bomb, a laser, so they can't really penetrate our shields. They do have a teleporter, though, and they will try to board us. And he boarded us in the room with the Lanius, so he is going to be very dead very quickly. Might as well send the other Lanius in here to just, like, kill him. Our Ion Stunner is about ready to go, just waiting for the chain laser to get charged up as well. And we can attack their clone bay, which will kill the crew member in there. There, he's dead. Their clone bay is in the red, and they have a man in there, and he's probably dead right about now. So that's good. One crew member that we don't have to worry about right now. If they if they keep boarding us, this would be fantastic. Our shields are offline, but Rockman can get that repaired. It's going to take a little while, but that's okay. I'm kind of hoping that they would choose to board me, but they probably won't. So we're just going to keep firing on their weapon system. It's now on fire. They're wounded. Which is nice. The fire, hopefully it spreads. No, it didn't spread. I can almost kill the crew, though. One more shot will kill Fleishy, but Williams has too much HP. He will not die in one more shot. 
Maybe if I had fired on the room with the uh, the crew, they would have left because of the fire, and then the fire would have ravaged their ship. I didn't. Maybe I should have. Our crew, all of our crew are wounded. This is kind of the big problem with the clone bay. We can't get them healed up. They will heal by themselves as we jump. So if you watch the HP bars on the left, there they go. Jumped up a little bit. But they're not at full health. They're not at full health, and that's kind of the crux of the problem with this ship. And they also hacked the clone bay. So if our crew die and they hack the clone bay, our crew are dead for good. What this means to me is that we will probably end up hacking their hacking room. But we're going to see where they land this border drone. They landed it in the cl in the clone bay. I think I should hack them. So I am going to hack them. They can't penetrate one bar of shields, so I don't need to worry about uh, keeping both bars of shields online. I can depower it and move the power elsewhere. We are going to hack their... Maybe, maybe I don't need to hack them. Let's hold off on a minute. Let's hold off. Ion Stunner missed. Chain Laser can fire in a second. If they both land, maybe we can take this drone offline temporarily. Ion Stunner is not going to be able to land. Uh, da, da, da. This is interesting. I think I just let the Border Drone do its work. Hey, we did it. We killed the Border Drone before it managed to destroy... Oh, fuck. And our oxygen level is at 21%. Damn it! It's because the... Uh, the doors were closed in the clone room, and the oxygen cycled through the ship. Well, that sucks. We are not going to be able to get that third achievement here without the oxygen levels exceeding 20%. That's actually kind of a piss-off, because that would have been really nice to pick up on the first run with the Lania ship. But there is a Type-B ship, so we will have the opportunity to... Uh... We, we will have the opportunity to get some uh, some achievements on later runs. They have a lot of fire in their ship, which is very nice. They're going to try to put out the fire. They're going to kill themselves on the fire. Oh, this is nice. Kill this crew member. They're trying to escape. Oh, but their engines are on fire and damaged. Oh, and they're screwed. Now, the only question at this point is, will we be able to kill the crew before the fire kills them? Actually, the fire's gone out, so now they... Uh, we probably will not be able to kill the crew. Yeah, now they're just going to be repairing everything. Fire's in the engine room, but the fire's going to go out at some point. So we're just going to have to kill them, unfortunately. They are offering a surrender offer with the anti-combat drone. I will accept it. It's not the best type of reward to get. It doesn't sell for very much. But if I get a drone system, drone control system, then it would be very nice to have. We detect a damage vessel docked with a jump beacon. It appears to be Lanius. Well, it appears the Lanius are absorbing metal from the beacon, risking destroying it and becoming stranded. We can ask if they require assistance via our Lanius crew member. After a time, you are told that they are damaged and unable to repair their ship due to a lack of metal. They offer to exchange a piece of their ship's equipment for some scrap or other useful materials. We can give them scrap, missiles, or drone parts. I will give them missiles. We do have a missile launcher, but we're not using it right now. Scrap, you know, I can always just buy missiles with scrap, so I'd rather get rid of something that I have an excess of right now. They give us a weapon pre-igniter. Holy shit, that is amazing. Is it always a weapon pre-igniter? Probably not, but that is fantastic. That is a thousand percent worth six missiles, because now we have a goddamn weapon pre-igniter. Amazing, fantastic, wonderful. Ah, oh, so good. Can't visit too many beacons before we have to uh, go to stores before we hit the exit, but that's fine. Take some extra scrap. We can visit one more beacon up top before we visit a store and then the exit. Intruders. Annoying. This is one of those annoying rooms or encounters where there's not really much we can do about it except... I guess close all... Or open all doors except for Rockman and Pilot Man. Cut them off from their one of their crew members, Joel, here, and then they are gonna have a, a bad time. 
They're going to try to get into the shield room. I can just have Rockman leave for now. Oh man, these guys are screwed. Might as well let him come in here and then just kill him. He is still trying to destroy the shield system and not leave because there's nowhere to go. He can't get into the piloting room. All right, might as well let the oxygen come back. We already missed out on getting that achievement, so it doesn't matter if I close all doors and wait for a second. Get these closed out. Pilot can help repair a little bit. Get the shields online, pilot can leave now. All right. Sucks, you know, that's one of those encounters that I do worry about having the uh, clone bay for, but we managed to make it work. Our crew members are, for the most part, healed up. It is a store. We can pick up a weapon, like a single power heavy laser, which honestly is not that bad, but we would really like to have a lot of shield busting potential, like flak guns, to really make good use with a, uh, or good use of a heavy laser. We can get a drone control system, backup battery, which we do need for one of the achievements. So I will probably pick up the backup battery. It means also that I don't have to spend quite so much scrap on uh, reactor power. I can just dump power into the backup battery. Teleporter is very nice with two Lanius crew members, but I do worry about only having the clone base. Let's hold off on that for now. The Hull Smasher Laser Mark III is actually pretty decent. Charges by default faster than the chain laser for one more power and one more shot. Also does double damage, also has a chance to breach. Would like to get the Hermes missile online. That would be fantastic with the weapon pre-igniter. We would be spending one missile per encounter. I don't have the scrap to do anything, so let's just ignore the store for now. And I don't really need to visit the other store, so let's just exit this sector. I will definitely attack the pirate. They are mind controlling us, but it's not that bad. We have the ion stunner that can go off immediately. We can keep our Lanius busy. And attack their weapons temporarily. Good, we got their big weapon offline. I can also hack their mind control room, which I am definitely going to, going to do. Now we mind control them instead of them mind controlling us. And he's just going to go ham on their weapon system, which is fine. The, uh, the mind control is not going to last for very long, but it doesn't need to last for very long. It just needs to... just needs to fuck with them for a little bit. Let's keep their mind control offline. They do have their laser back online, but we will be able to take that offline very quickly here with a chain laser shot. Only one has to hit. Two hit, so that's fine. They will be mind controlling us in a minute. They are going to offer us for fuel eight missiles and eight scrap. I'm actually going to accept this offer. Eight missiles is amazing. We spent six to get a weapon pre-igniter. This makes up for that and then some. And now I, I don't feel bad about maybe in the future getting the the Hermes Missile Launcher online using missiles, even one per encounter means that that just paid for eight encounters. That's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. We will need a lot of scrap before that happens though. Ah, this, I love this encounter when we have a rock crew member. It is a small research station on fire and they can't put it out. But our rock crew member is immune to fire. So we're gonna send him in your rock soldier tears through the airlock directly into the fire. You've never seen someone that large move that fast. It disperses, it being the rock man, as much fire suppressant as possible into the heart of the blaze and eventually the fire starts to die down. They give us emergency respirators, which we already have, so it just turns into 25 scrap. Not bad, that was worth 53 scrap from that one encounter alone. That's pretty dang good. We will need 73 more scrap before we can get the Hermes missile online, so it will take some time. There is nothing at this beacon. That was a bad jump. Couldn't have known that, though. We will definitely intervene and defend the outpost, and I think this might be a situation where we hack their weapon system. 
Yeah. Yeah, we missed a couple of shots there. I could hack their shields. But I think I'll hack their weapon system. Wait for their single shot laser to fire and then hack. May even want to switch over to the Hermes for a little bit of this encounter, but hopefully we can make do here. We're just missing too many shots. They're probably going to be shooting their flak gun before the chain laser hits. Activate the backup battery, get the shields online. Oh, they changed the power just perfectly at the last possible second. Now our weapons are offline, which sucks. We're going to have to rely on our hack to prevent their flak gun from firing again. Get the chain laser back online. It has to fire a couple of times to get its charge back, which sucks. Not much we can do about that. Backup battery has been wounded. Let's get someone in there to repair that. Can't really get any extra power into the shield system, unfortunately. But their single flak is still offline. Let's get the stun going again. It missed, so let's just fire the chain laser to get it charged up a little bit more and hack their weapons. Uh, our hack did get disrupted, unfortunate. Very unfortunate. This encounter sucks. <laughs> we will have to dump power into the shield system before their flak fires. There it goes. Only 10% dodge chance, which is terrible. We took three points of damage on that round alone. This is not looking good. I might just actually just jump out of here. See, this is the problem with the stun... Ion Stunner Chain Laser. We don't have a lot of firepower right now. I need to get the Hermes online. Let's see where this bomb lands. <sighs> Let's hold off on a minute. We can we can jump in a minute. We don't need to jump right now. We can get some repairs in. They're firing their flak again. And the laser at the same time. Now we're gonna jump. We're we're making no progress on that fight, so. We got some time now, we can get things repaired. That was a that was a bad encounter. Bad encounter. I probably should have hacked their shields, because then it was guaranteed damage I could do over time. Hacking their weapons, you know, it's good for a time, but they were just dodging one shot out of every chain laser that I was shooting at them. I didn't have the, the power to damage them as heavily as I would want, so that did not work out that well for me. Let's keep the shields powered, and then I can back up battery hack if I need to. It's probably a little bit better for my mind to handle. Could go up to the store with 119 scrap. Kind of don't want to though. I think I want to save and get the Hermes missile online. We already have 17 missiles. Gotta start using them. Now combat drone plus a double shot laser sucks. They also have a anti-drone which will shoot down my hacking module when it goes in. Now, our stunner unfortunately hit their drone out of the air, meaning that we couldn't get both shots from the chain laser in, which means they will be able to shoot us with a missile, and it's probably going to hit. Hit an empty room, though. It's pretty good for me. Let's see if we can't take down their missile launcher. Good stuff. Maybe get another shot in on their missiles, keep them offline, and we started a fire. They are now in the med bay. I could... Ooh, I could hack the med bay, but they still have the defense drone, so I'm not really going to get too many shots in on the med bay. Let's just damage their ship. Hit their engines, their shields, their their weapons, keep their stuff offline. Hit their shields next. Started another fire in the, sh in the shield room, which is nice. And I'm going to stun them in a second with this ion stunner shot. They're offering a surrender offer. I'm not going to accept it. I accepted the last one with eight missiles. Let's just kill these guys instead. And they're dead. Stunning them in the room with the fire is awesome. Pick up 18 scrap, which is not bad. Still need a little bit more scrap before I can get the Hermes missile online, so let's hold off on purchasing anything quite yet. We will try to deliver their parts, which is right there. So let's go to one beacon first. We might have some encounter. I think it's like a save a station from a rebel ship or something, or a pirate ship or something. Uh, they're gonna try to board us, which is probably not the best move on their part. They're going to die very quickly, I have to guess. 
See if we can't take down their missiles. They do have another defense drone, so I can't do anything about it. I can't get a uh, hacking drone in there. I just have to... I just have to go after their shields with the stunner. Their crew member with the chain laser. Might as well fire it just to get it charged up a little bit faster. Missiles back online. Get everyone back into their rooms of choice. Okay, both shots land, please. Good. Uh, well, both shots did land. Unfortunately, it wasn't the uh, what I wanted. That is also a two damage missile, which is kind of dangerous. Our ion stunner also missed, so we can't even shoot the chain laser, unfortunately. And again, the ion stunner missed, so we can't actually... I'm going to shoot anyways just to get the uh, training on this unit. Ferris here, and... This is getting to be an annoying encounter. Our weapons are completely offline. I think we're just going to have to leave from this encounter because their missiles are just eating me up. I have no defense against them right now. Yeah, like I, I have no missile defense. My weapons take a long time to kill enemy ships that have two bars of shields. So I think we just need to get this Hermes missile online ASAP. Our crew members will also die here in a minute. Might as well get them out of the room, let the uh, oxygen take out the fire on its own. This sucks, man. One missile missed. I also haven't been upgrading the engine, so our FTL drive takes a long time to charge. A long, long, long time to charge. Jump, yes, jump out of here, out of this stupid beacon. Might as well wait a second, let some repairing happen. Jump to an empty beacon. Hopefully we have time. No, we don't. We actually find an asteroid field, which is incredibly dangerous if we can't hit their weapon systems, which we can. Good. Dangerous because our shields were offline, and if our shields are offline, we're probably going to take some damage. But luckily, we hit their weapons with the chain laser that had the weapon pre-igniter effect on it. Their bomb is now offline. Okay. Shields are finally repaired. Thank you, Charlie. Ferris is coming back to life. We can't actually upgrade the ship, though. I have enough scrap right now, I think, for the Hermes missile, but I can't actually spend the money on it because we are in an asteroid field. We have to wait 